Hey guys, so today's video uh, is going to be me talking about the GNOME desktop environment and this video is a little sooner coming than I would have expected and would have liked. So as you guys know, of course I'm doing this little mini-series, I guess it is, where I uh, use a desktop environment for uh, a significant amount of time as my primary desktop environment and then I talk to you guys about how I find using it. And it's generally going to be mainly focused around usability more than any other kinds of... Um, usage benchmark but I will be talking about a few other things okay so let's start off with some of the interesting uh, or some of the the more objective facts about GNOME it started on March 3rd uh, 1999 which is significantly later than I um, than I thought actually um, and its last stable release was two months ago as of recording it's written in C, C++, Vala, Python and JavaScript um, available in more than 40 different languages and its license is GPL um, and LGPL. You can find out more information at gnome.org. Now I've been trying out GNOME 3 and uh, GNOME 3 is quite well known because Linus Torvalds doesn't like it and um, I can see why. This uh, video is a little early because I need to get onto the next operating system because GNOME is just not usable for me. Okay, so first off, there were a lot of comments in my KDE um, video um, about me referring to it requiring 2 gig of uh, RAM for it to run reasonably effectively. A lot of you pointed out that it's not particularly difficult to slim that down. Uh, in fact, some of you guys had pretty beefy KDE um, uh, sort of environments and you were running at 1,500 um, gig RAM. So... Um, and, and by comparison, yeah, GNOME's a lot slower than KDE, a lot more than I was expecting, because I was kind of expecting something maybe a little more similar to Cinnamon. Um, but it, I, I, I don't know, you know, I don't know why, but it, it just, it's a lot more sluggish than Cinnamon. Um, and I can now, I can see why, um, it, you know, it makes a lot more sense to me why they decide to fork Cinnamon as an entirely separate desktop environment rather than having it as a GNOME shell because it, there were just so many things about it. There were a good number of little bugs that I found. Now, just to clarify, I used the Ubuntu GNOME version, so the GNOME remix of Ubuntu. So I, I wanted to, to make sure that because GNOME is, is one that I haven't really picked up and given it a serious go, that I wanted it to be uh, installed properly and installed correctly with all the bells and whistles required. And I thought the best way to do that was to install it on the latest long-term support release of Ubuntu. Uh, and I got the specific GNOME remix. So um, the uh, one of the bigger problems as well, the same problem uh, I had with Cinnamon actually, is that it allows you to pick a primary display if you've got a multi-monitor setup. But that uh, display then has the taskbar, and you can't have multiple taskbars on multiple monitors, and um, you can only have it on your, your primary display. So if you want to uh, have a taskbar not on your primary display, for example, I like to play games, games tend to traditionally like to load in the primary display, and if I want to uh, use my taskbar whilst the game is open, uh, it's nice to have it on a separate monitor so I can sort of alt-tab out reasonably easily. It's a little quirk of mine, but I, it's, to me it's, it's reasonably important because of course I do Let's Plays, I do a fair amount of of, um, video game streaming and to have a lot of windows open um, and to have sort of readily available access to them and, and, and sort of a lot of control over them because of course when you're live streaming you want to have absolute control over all your windows all the time because you don't want um, like a browser window to, to come into view with with like you know your personal email or whatever on and, and, and get out there on the internet so you've got to be in complete control of your windows GNOME just was not suitable for that GNOME was really not um, so, yeah, I certainly didn't feel in control of, 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 of the windows, of the environment, um, and I didn't like, you know, and obviously I had the same problem as Cinnamon, when you had that primary display, you know, with lack of any kind of customizability, because the, uh, the reason why I want a primary display separate from where the taskbar is, is I want to load a program, you know, when I want to load up a program, I want it to default to loading up to a different screen, but if it loads in full screen by default, I don't want it to block out my, my taskbar. It's you know pretty reasonable. Um, and a lot of you guys in the comments didn't seem to think that was that actually that strange. That that um, you seem to think it was it was a reasonably nor normal occurrence for someone that uh, that might have multiple monitors. Um, and it, I guess it kind of feels a bit uh, unique because I googled it and, and there aren't really that many guides or uh, or help files or whatever that sort of indicate that um, that you're stuck. So, uh, it, yeah, I mean, it doesn't really start off particularly well. It's already got the same problems as Cinnamon, but it's also got a much more experimental interface. 
Uh, my another problem I had with it uh, was the same problem Linus uh, Torvalds had with it, and that was that it rec- it was a, it's a two-handed desktop environment. Basically, is the, is the long short of it. You needed keyboard and you needed mouse. You needed both hands on the uh, um, on the machine at both times. You can't sort of uh, use it. it. Like it's it, first of all, it's very difficult to use remotely. So if you've got like one of those uh, remote mouses uh, or remote mice. Um, then yeah, it's it's significantly more difficult or, or, or less intuitive to use as a mouse only interface. Um, and obviously with a keyboard only interface, it's a little more intuitive to use, but it's pretty, it's not fantastic even then. It's, 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 you, it requires both. And, um, and I, 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 you know, I'm not a fan of that. And it doesn't really give you much customization room if you, if you want to have a keyboard only or a mouse only. I like the idea that with uh, window managers like Rat Poison, they tell you right from, from the off, this is a keyboard driven desktop environment. Well, I mean, it's called a Windows Manager, but it really is a desktop environment if you think about it. Um, and they, they tell you right there and then, keyboard only. If you don't like working with a keyboard, pick another one. But GNOME, I don't know, it, it, in a way it kind of sells itself as a bit more of a universal desktop environment because it used to be that. Um, but now it seems to be, and, it, and I, I don't care what the developers say, that is a mobile interface. It looks, it, it, I mean, it's a striking resemblance to Android, really. And Android's great on tablets. Um, and I, I, I think GNOME would be better on a tablet. Uh, then again, it would need to slim down quite a lot. Um, and it is. It, it's, it's the, it's, it's, and, and it, it's, it's, I mean, it's, 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 it's a little bit better than Android in some ways because, because it puts your most recently used programs to the top of the menu. And I like that. That's actually a really good feature, and, I, and uh, but then again, you can kind of do that, and uh, even with KD, with, with other desktop environments, and with KDE, you can actually specifically outline your favorites. You can also outline your favorites in GNOME. Now, most people, including myself, don't regularly use more than ten programs. Um, so to have um, to to put all those ten programs on your favorites bar on the side is a good sort of um, way to negate there not being a proper menu system. Um, but that being said, if you want to load up, for example, a game or something, you're going to sort of pretty much resort to the keyboard because, again, I, I play more than 10 games in a year, so putting them on the favourites is a bit... Yeah, it's not intuitive. I thought after after a, a, a few days, I've, I think I've been using it for about five days now, I thought after about, um, by now, it would be intuitive, and I think I, I, I feel that I would be more on the level, I'd be more inclined to... <sighs> I think I just feel more. I I would have expected to feel more comfortable uh, with it at this stage. I feel that I was misunderstanding it, um, but but uh, but it's it isn't it isn't for me. Um, is what I'm saying. It's you know it it is bloated. The um, the native apps aren't particularly intuitive. The file manager isn't particularly intuitive. I think they're using Nautilus. Um, yeah, it's. Um, I was expecting there to be one or two areas where I might be pleasantly surprised, but it, it my expectations weren't particularly high, and they weren't even met then, and that's kind of the problem. Um, and I can really see why Mate is taking off with the popularity that it is on Mate. Uh, I can really see why uh, the fellas at Linux Mint want to develop Cinnamon as a fork and not as a shell for, for GNOME. And I can understand why there are so few distributions in, say, the DistroWatch Top 20 that that use GNOME. Um, there are a number that use KDE. There aren't very many that use GNOME. Some use GNOME variants. Some use GNOME shells. Um, and I think the real problem with GNOME is the shell. It is the 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 intuitiveness of the UI. Um, because we, we you know we all like GTK apps. We all understand the value of GTK apps, and GTK is it's fantastic. Um, but that UI, man, that UI, and and the fact that you have to, you know, if it was super lightweight, then I'd be able to go some way into to sort of forgiving it. But it's not, man. It's slower than KDE. Um, there is no, there is, in my, in my mind, in my personal way of looking at it, there is no way in which GNOME is 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 better than KDE to me. Now. GNOME isn't dead in the water. It's not going to be dead in the water for for a while because even though its UI is 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 wrecked, it's I think it's broken. I think that people are ditching it left, right, and center. There's a lot of other things that it does. Is a, there's a lot of other useful things that it does bring to the uh, to the Linux table. Um, and I think that you know the the ability to put, you know develop shells for it and whatever is is going to work in its favor. 
um, because not every uh, not every distribution is going to be outfitted the way that Linux Mint is to be able to fork it. And I think too many forks might necessarily just not be perfect there. Um, and there might be a time when we start seeing shells put on to, to the Cinnamon rather than GNOME 3. Um, and of course, it, it, Mate are working up to um, GTK3 support as well, which is interesting. So, um, so my next distribution is going to be XFCE. And this is going to be a particularly interesting one because um, even though some of the apps for XFCE are currently being developed, we haven't seen a uh, desktop environment update or an update on the uh, at least the news section of XFCE.org since 2012. Uh, and a lot of people are saying that XFCE, uh, it almost missed the boat. There were a lot of people looking for GNOME alternatives when GNOME 3 came out. And XFCE was expected to fill the that spot. And because it was, um, I guess, it, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I, w I would have expected, to, you know, and I don't know why. And, and, and then you got Mate, Mate, and, you know, Cinnamon that are, uh, effectively. Um, so I'll be looking, of course, at Mate, and I'll be looking at Unity as well, the infamous Unity, which I have tried to get on with before and just have failed. So it'll be interesting to see if I can if I can pick that up again, because a few of you guys in the comment section did actually mention that you liked Unity. Not many of you, but there were one or two there. And considering that there was a time when I just couldn't understand why anyone would like Unity, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it another go. But XFCE. There are plenty of distributions that use XFCE. There's a growing number of uh, th that are, and even though it might not be as as vehemently maintained as it used to be, um, I, I I I really would appreciate something a little more traditional, a little snappier, and something that I I is a bit more tried and tested, I guess. So I'm looking very much for that. Uh, what do you guys think of GNOME? I have a feeling that there are going to be a number of you that disagree with me on this one. Um, I feel a little bad for being so neg negative towards it, but I, I'm not going to lie to you guys. This is this is how I've you know I, you know and 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 I can't I can't honestly think of anything positive about it. The more I'm thinking, I'm trying to find a positive thing about it. I'm just finding more negative things. Another negative thing was that the the window borders that came on. Um, Ubuntu GNOME, which were the def which I think are the default ones for GNOME, are massive. They were like they com they they completely made the windows uh, bigger than they necessarily need to be. Uh, I don't have the highest resolution monitors in the world. Um, I don't like throwing out old stuff, which makes me inclined to not upgrade things like monitors when the old ones still work. Which means I'm not running the highest resolution. Uh, monitors, which means that when you know those windows borders are taking up sort of vital screen, uh, you know, screen real estate. Um, so with with all of that in mind, GNOME is is I like it's a thumbs down, man. It's a thumbs down. This is why I don't like. This is why I'm not going to be giving them sort of ratings out of ten or anything. It's because it, because I I don't know why I'd give this one. Like it, I mean, it contributes a lot in terms of the the back end features of of GNOME, but that UI was it's it was just it was hell, man. As far as UIs go, <laughs> I mean, it's a bit of a first world problem. But yeah, it's uh, it's not so. Uh, you know, I, I I'm sorry, and I really am. Like because you can tell that a lot of work's gone into it. They took a big risk changing the UI up like that, um, and there are there are there are ways you can tweak it. Uh, using the GNOME tools, but you can you cannot tweak it enough. You cannot repair what I find to be so unusable about it. Um, but I am I'm like I I really am sorry that I couldn't say it couldn't be nicer about it because I know that there's a lot of work in, in gone into it and I know that um, that it deserves a greater reception in it, really. But it's just not usable. Sorry, guys. Um, but, um, yeah, like I say, looking forward to XFCE. We'll see how that goes. Um, I expect it'll probably be quite a good review um, if it... If it I, I mean, I'm assuming it's going to be this, a similar experience to what it was last time I used it. Um, and it's probably going to be... Yeah, it's really good, but the fact that it's not maintained enough um, might mean that something like Mate might be a more suitable substitute for it. I don't know. That's my guess about what the review will be. Don't hold me to that uh, just yet. So that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.